will be presenting some experiments we have run trying to get an academic document editing system to work on a NAS, a network accessible storage server, which is a small device you can have either on your desk or in a bookshelf. But first, let's see why would we think that it would make sense to run such a setup at all. and scholarly communication are somewhat different from regular documents because they include some features that not all documents have. For example, citations are fairly central. So that means uh, to, in order to ensure that all the citations within a given document look the same, it makes sense to use citation management. Also, formulas or figures are fairly common. A different aspect is how the document is created. Many people just write their regular document on just their computer. In many sciences, one actually needs to collaborate on a document together with others, so that it makes sense to have some kind of collaborative uh, editing system. A third aspect is how the document is being handled once it has been written. Uh, in order to publish something in a scholarly journal, uh, one usually has to go through some kind of peer review process. So there needs to be some kind of setup whereby a peer reviewer can give comments and one can react to these comments and make changes according to them and so on. In many cases, there shouldn't even be a way of finding out who the reviewer is. Or the reviewer may know who the writer is but not the other way around and so on. All this means that scholarly communication really requires a different set of tools. Nevertheless, the most common used word processor to write these documents continues to be Microsoft Word, which is not particularly good at the job and which is just the regular word processor that people have installed on their computer anyway. a number of alternatives have come along that address some of these issues. Google Docs and Microsoft Office 365 Online don't require a local installation and they allow collaboration via the browser. There are also some offers that address specifically the needs of academics. Overleaf and Authoria are editors that allow collaboration online with the tools that academics need in a word processor. However, along with this has come a new issue, an issue of security. If you run a word processor over the internet on a server of some company in a country that you cannot control, there are a number of security issues with it. First of all, there's of course the company that runs the server. Can you trust them? Do you want to trust them? There's also the issue of crossing borders and uh, foreign services. This is where the aspect of open source comes in. Because some of these services, Shalatech, Fidus Writer, uh, are open source, which the implication or the most important implication in this case is that you can run them on your own server or a server you have access to. Um, that gives you some more control of where the application is running on the web and who has access to it. But still, Probably if you have a server, it will not be your server, it will be some server space you rented from some company on the internet. If you run the editing application on some server space you rented on the internet, you will have a lot of the same security issues that you have if you run a, a cloud service from another company. If you want to have something that's even more secure, uh, you may want to have something that's running peer-to-peer, -peer, that's running from one computer to another uh, directly. Um, that is possible, but there are some challenges with that. The first challenge is that when computers connect to the internet, at least nowadays, because of the, the number of IP addresses that are in total, uh, usually ISPs internet service providers don't give them the same IP number every time. 
it makes it somewhat challenging finding each other. If I want to collaborate with a uh, somebody else on the internet, but that uh, that person's IP number is changing and mine is changing, it will be somewhat difficult to to know exactly how to connect to the other one. One cannot just interchange IP numbers just once. That's the first aspect. The second aspect is that. Uh, such solutions will have to be installed again locally and installation procedures because everybody has their own OS and everything's a bit different will not always be the same. So this will be challenging especially for users who are not able to, to, to do a lot with their computer except write documents and so on. A third aspect is what if I want to collaborate with somebody, I want to write a document collaboratively uh, but we are not necessarily on the internet at the same time. Um, the important aspect of, of, of this is that we always want to make sure that each user has the latest version of the document because we are writing it together. And, uh, and so if I write a document and the other person isn't online when I'm done, so I close my computer, it can only be stored on my computer, but if I then if then the other person connects while I'm asleep and starts typing in, in their version of the document, then we're almost sure that the, 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 it will be hard to merge these back together and because this is human language, it will actually be impossible to do so automatically um, without having some kind of intervention again. So that's a problem and this is where the, where the NAS solution comes in. The NAS solution is good because it allows for us for having this small computer turned on while we turn our laptops off. Um, also, NAS, uh, they, because they are small servers that come and that usually are configured for like people making backups of uh, pictures on, on, on mobile phones and so on, and they have a web interface which is fairly easy to maneuver through and that allow you to, to install new packages by clicking and confirming and so on. Uh, so that makes it easier even for people who are not network administrators to, to install this stuff. The third aspect, the IP numbers, well the good thing is that at least some of these uh, NAS servers come with a dynamic DNS service already fully uh, set up so that they will have a, a domain name under which they can be uh, reached and the, the end user doesn't even notice. So uh, all you have to do is you have to put up this NAS server, you have to, to click and uh, point and click, you have to install a, an, an app, then you will get a link and it will be a, a permanent link that will always work. Um, the NAS server, make sure that your router lets specific ports through so that you can connect to it and you and with this you can get a final link that you can then send out to colleagues and they can connect to your local uh, NAS installation with that. Uh, what we did here is we tested whether this actually works, whether this can be done and uh, for this we used a Synology machine, a DS215J, which is about two and a half years old and which is standing in northern Germany. Um, and we uh, tried to install uh, Fetus Writer on this one. We chose Fetus Writer because it is uh, fully WYSIWYG and it's uh, really made for uh, non-technical users. It's semantic and WYSIWYG, so it has that combination. And we tried to install it. Um, of course, because of the limited amount of time, we didn't package it, so we, we don't have a package that you can just click and install and so on. But we did it by installing a Debian CH root package and then use the installation instructions for Ubuntu, which are fairly similar because Ubuntu is fairly similar to Debian. And then we tried to connect with uh, at least five clients to this to this NAS server, and uh, surprise, uh, this was actually possible, and we had no problem in 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 any uh, way of connecting with each other and, and seeing real time changes to the document. Uh, so that, because that would have been the hardest aspect. Now the, the there are other aspects which may surprise some. 
uh, other people that this worked, such as word export and, and uh, PDF creation and so on. But this this did work, but it wasn't so surprising to us because uh, Fidus Writer had been written in a way so that it's client heavy, so that most of the computing takes place in the browser on the on the on the laptop or the desktop computer that is running uh, that uh, where people are looking at at uh, the application and it's not running on the on the server side which in this case is the weak point um, a NAS server is because it's focused on storing uh, data does not have a strong web server uh, in it it doesn't have a strong CPU or, or RAM it has in this case it has uh, half a half a gigabyte it has a, a fairly limited uh, CPU uh, but still, this was enough to run Fidus Writer for five users. Why five users? Because we thought this was the maximum that it was realistic that somebody would actually uh, want to collaborate on a document with. Now, of course, this is not for having an installation where you can have like an entire journal managed out of this, but it's something that a professor or a, a, an academic could have installed in their office to collaborate with a, a limited amount of, of people on a document. Our tests have shown that this is possible, but that does not mean that it, it is actually possible right now because we haven't packaged the app. And we haven't tried it out on end users. Do they really feel that the installation system of the NAS is as simple as we thought it was? Is buying a little thing that you have on your bookshelf or in your desk, is that something people are interested in? Um, these are questions that remain to be answered. And in the continuation, we hope to find these answers.